In this episode, of Art, Science, and Truth, I will try to tackle, an impossible sounding question of, what is good art? What makes artwork good? If it mimics reality, as closely as possible. If it follows closely the right design principles, and rules. If it carries, a powerful message. Or, if it evokes strong emotions in the viewer. The question, what is good art? Or what makes a particular work of art good? Is a question that has been a matter of debate, since ancient past. One of the reasons, why the question is difficult to answer, is the fact, that the concept of art itself, remains without clear definition. In this video, I'll try to deal with the subject, with kind of common sense, down to earth, and practical approach. Let's begin with, a little crash course on art theories. It will give us a general framework on judging, whether artwork is good, or not. If we think about, types of art, in the broad sense, artwork is either realistic, abstract, or something in between. This is a really vast spectrum, that covers all possible styles of visual art. It's obvious, that it is not reasonable, to judge all the possible variations of art, with absolutely same standards. This is why art theories, become handy. They can give us, some practical guidelines, to judge the quality, of any particular artwork. Quick note, before we delve into the subject. I'm a professional artist, but I'm not, a trained lecturer, on topics like, art theory. My approach to art is more pragmatic. I'm interested in, how to make a good piece of art. But I do understand from experience, that having some level of understanding, on more philosophical, and theoretical aspects of art, can give an artist, or a viewer, some solid principles for judging art. So, let's cover quickly, the four basic theories of art, as I understand them. First, imitationalism. According to imitationalist art theory, art is good, when it mimics reality, and is true to life. More realistic, the better. Examples fitting to this category are, all forms of realistic art, from classical realism, to hyperrealism. These styles of art, are all attempts, of mimicking the visual reality. This is probably, the most easiest art form to understand, for a layperson. It doesn't require special skills to judge, if the artwork looks realistic, or not. All probably understand also that, any type of quality realism, requires certain amount of skill, and craftsmanship. This requirement of technical skill, gives viewers one solid standard, for judging the quality, of realist artwork. So, basically we can judge artwork, by two standards. First, does it mimic, visual reality convincingly? Second, does it show good technical skill, and craftsmanship? Let's go into the, second art theory. Formalism. Formalism, is all about the principles of design. Formalist artwork, doesn't mimic reality. It is only interested in, how the artwork looks in terms of color, shape, line, texture, and composition. Formalist piece of art can be fully abstract. As long as the viewer, has an eye on, or some level of understanding of good composition and design, there are some, somewhat solid standards, to judge the abstract artwork. The principles of good design, can be applied to any type of artwork thus making the basic idea behind formalism, a good standard, for judging the quality of artwork. But in general, formalist artwork, because it's abstract in nature, brings up more subjective aspects into play. Thus making a question of, if artwork is good, more a matter of taste. Formalist artwork doesn't need to show great technical skill, to be good. A good composition and design, is more a matter of knowledge, than it's about technical skill. The third art theory is, instrumentalism. Instrumentalism is all about the message. The message can be moral, social, religious, or political. The motive behind instrumentalist artwork, is furthering some idea, or message. The standard for judging instrumentalist art is the persuasiveness of it. Thus the instrumentalist art, can be a powerful tool for propaganda. Obviously, the instrumentalist art, can contain all forms of visual expression. 
So, a good instrumentalist piece, can be abstract, realistic, impressionistic, expressionist, or any other style of art. If it transmits the message effectively, the work of art has attained its purpose. Let's cover shortly one more art theory. Emotionalism. In short, emotionalism is about the emotion. Emotionalism puts emphasis on expressive qualities. Emotionalist artwork tries to establish an emotional connection or communication between the artwork and the viewer. A successful emotionalist artwork evokes a mood or a feeling in the viewer. This form of art is extremely subjective. But at least there is a one standard for judging the emotionalist artwork. It is its emotional effect. The danger of emphasizing subjective expression too much is that all good principles of art and technical requirements doesn't matter anymore. It's all about emotion. But when coupled with good design and craftsmanship, emotionalism is a valid form of artistic expression. As you can probably see, these kind of theoretical separations are a bit artificial. In reality, these four so-called art theories overlap each other. Usually, the best of the best works of art combine some elements from imitationalism, formalism, instrumentalism, and emotionalism. My own personal theory of art is that a good art is something that can be judged by some solid objective standards. The work of art can be abstract, or it can be highly realistic. The actual style doesn't really matter. If it shows a good level of understanding of the principles of art and aesthetics, along with good technical skill and craftsmanship, it is good art. There's also a very practical reason for me holding to this particular viewpoint or theory. As an art teacher, I need solid and clear methodology and principles for teaching the technical side of art. The technical side of art is the best to teach on basis of some objective standards. There's no other good way to judge the artwork of students other than judging them by well-chosen principles. Otherwise, it's just about personal opinions. This is why a lot of successful art teachers, schools, academies, and ateliers teach copying from observation. In other words, they follow the imitationalist theory. But why is this so effective way to train highly skilled artists when the goal is to produce a perfect replica of the visual object? It is rather easy to judge how well the artist has succeeded. Perfect copy is perfectly identical with the model. The success can be objectively measured. And I mean it literally. It can be literally measured with the trained eye of the teacher and with different optical measuring tools. Of course, a good artistic training is not just about copying the subject. There is a lot more to it. The methods and principles of realism exceed mere copying. In good artistic training, other principles come into play also. In the end, we can't escape the fact that personal taste and background also affects how we judge any particular piece of art. So, I don't want to debate on this subject. These are just my personal views, and I respect others' right to have their own views. When it comes to different styles of art, I like different styles. My own artwork leans pretty heavily on the realistic side. But I also experiment with abstract expression. I have a leading concept behind my art. All art is an abstraction of reality. Only the level of abstraction varies from style to style. I don't think I have anything more to add to this at this time. This is Steve Adler of Art, Science, and Truth. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Take care.